Anime movies have such a way of throwing you in full force that it's confusing at times. The movie starts with Mio walking through a cat town before being greeted by a giant talking cat man who kind of looks like Buddha if he was a cat. We are then suddenly brought to Mio at a festival with her mother trying to convince Mio to help her get full custody and I'm sure that's all super sad. But more importantly I really want to go to a Japanese festival someday. They're so prevalent in anime it's like a dream of mine. I want to attend a Japanese festival more than I want to eat anime food at this point. Mio runs away from her mom and then talks to the human version of the cat from her dream and offers to let her try a mask on. And maybe it's different in Japan, but if a fat man smoking from a pipe I met in the middle of the woods offered me anything, I think I would decline personally, but I'm not the main character of a movie. Mio seems to have a crush on a guy in her school named Hinode, which is very apparent when everyone in her eyes becomes mindless NPCs beside him. She has a very schoolboyish way of expressing affection, and by that I mean annoying your object of desire. She attacks him with her butt which I feel like is something only a girl would be able to do because otherwise it would be a very creepy way to express affection. Mio and her friend are discussing why she doesn't give up on Hinode even though she seems desperate and he kind of just ignores her. And then Mio begins to tell a story in which Hinode held Mio during a festival as it started to rain and huddled under some statues. And just how intimate and soft that moment is. And I think this is when the story introduced solely her being able to turn into a cat because unless he went momentarily blind, I don't see how or understand why he would hold her so tenderly while talking about himself with someone he seems to can't stand actually. I think she remembers something that happened when she was a cat and Hinode probably has a fondness for cats and as someone with a cat I'll also hold my cat and tell him about my mental illness and darkest secrets. But that brings me to a larger point I had because a character getting to know their crush or love interest in a very intimate but indirect way where the crush doesn't know it's them isn't a new concept and my thought is would that be okay though? Say you have a crush or someone you like and they got to know you deeply one without you getting to know them as well but also them not knowing it's you wouldn't that be a bit weird imagine if you're hanging out and a person who hasn't been annoying you and you have shown time and time again you have no interest in them random is like how is your sick grandma i'd be freaked out like how do you know that we have never talked before are you stalking me i'd get a restraining order i think also because i'm a sad lonely old man i don't like romance especially ones where the main character kind of pesters their way into being loved by their crush and i have a deep-seated jealousy that i can't do that myself if they do it it's cool but if I do it, I get blocked on Facebook and have to show up in court next week. And noting in typical Sundari fashion has a not so great home life and his dad is dead and his mom is on his back about someday providing for the family. And that's a common theme in anime. I don't really need to get into that. What I will get into is that I was right. Mio can turn into a cat and Hinode has a fondness for animals. Now, I love my cat, but if I found out that my cat was actually a person this entire time, I would grab my standard issue gun that's given to every American we were born and tell them one of us gotta go. Ain't no way. My cat has seen me fresh out of the shower. I clean his litter box every single day. We both can't go on living with as much as each other's buttholes as we've seen in either direction. I know it's meant to be cute and I'm not hating, I promise, but it's a tiny bit weird, right? Mio seems to be so happy and excited to get closer and get to know Hinode. And on some level, I'm happy for you, sis. Keep thriving. But this is kind of a creepy way to do it, right? Especially because he's not getting to know you. He's taking care of a cat. The mass salesman shows up and is like, you like being a cat to Mio. Cool, give me your face. I'm a salesman, ultimately. I sell human masks to cat and cat masks to humans and I'm sure there are people who would love to be a cat but I kind of feel like that's a fair trade honestly. It's odd that Mio who probably didn't pay money for it just thought this magic deity was handing out the ability to transform. The amount of animated movies that would be cut short if someone just went hey why is this free would ruin the anime market. Is it like a cultural thing to assume people around you aren't going to cause you trouble or aren't trying to scam you in some way? Am I just a jaded American? Even when I was a teenager like Mio if an adult man offered me anything for free that wasn't some sort of cheap trinket or an advertisement of some sort i would think he was a weirdo who wants my boy bits get out of my face old man in a way the fat cat man is kind of weird but when you think about it objectively bro is just kind of going either give me my mask back or pay for it Mule's home situation is comparatively better but also incredibly confusing because after dinner with her dad and stepmom she goes on about how she doesn't belong there and wants to marry hinode and leave which logically speaking unlikely even if they were adults hinode comes across as the type who would be too motivated to provide for his family to marry anytime soon. But also her home situation is confusing because at the beginning of the movie there was a lady asking Mio to tell her dad to let her live with her and Mio stormed off. That's how she found the mask seller in the first place. But also before dinner there was a lady feeding Mio food as a child which might be Mio's mom. Either way I don't know what's happening unless they're going to explain that Mio's dad is an absolute Jezebel and just bringing women home left and right. So it turns out that the collie you see very often when they show her no day's room 
is the color of his dead dog and he named cat Mio after his dead dog which is just dumb to me because like who reuses pet names I don't know it kind of feels icky and weird to me as someone who has had multiple family pets over the years I would never reuse a name but that's not the point it just makes Mio's one sad desire to get closer to Hinode kind of weirder I'm trying my best to cut her some slack because she's a kid but also if I had like a little brother who was this obsessive over a girl in his class and she had very obviously rejected him and he was still pursuing her but doing it in a roundabout way I would literally force him to apologize to her and make him tell her he'd never bother her again I know it's anime as such and I'll try not to be a bitter hermit about it but at a certain point if someone doesn't want you whether ever or any longer at what point are you just being weird if someone says they aren't interested and you continue to pursue them you're saying I heard that but it's no longer about your wishes anymore it's about what I want and I want you there's no other way about it if someone says no and you still bother them about the thing they said no about you're being weird and saying you don't care scenes where Hinode rubs his face in the cat Mio's body are a little weird contextually but we're going to put that aside because there's a lot of talk about Mio once officially close enough with Hinode she's going to come out and tell him she was a stray cat he was feeding and hanging out with the entire time now let's for a moment put aside how insane that would be to say to someone and address the meat and potatoes of that scenario assuming he wouldn't question how if he doesn't like you as a person why would that shift dramatically when he finds out that you're the cat he was hanging out with cats don't talk they sleep a good chunk of the time and kind of do their own thing more or less the dynamic is 100 different from human relationships what's stopping hinode from going okay cool please stop coming around me now that i know this information i don't want a romantic relationship i appreciate you being a cat for a while but no thanks to dating some people just like animals more than people because there's less ambiguity in the dynamic maybe hinode just doesn't connect with many people very well or very much at all and prefers animals because they're comfortable and easy to read unlike people what is she expecting to happen why are you like this Mio and in anime fashion it completely works Mio jumps from the second story of her school and into a tree below because she heard people talking about Hinode in a negative way while on lunch Hinode sees her do that and takes her to the nurse and gives her half his lunch and I also wish I could be annoying until someone loved me it hasn't worked yet but I promise not to give up the way Hinode looked at his friend it only started laughing once he started laughing I think someone needs to sit Mio down and tell her about when a man loves another man because I don't think it matters how much she loves Hinode he might not be playing for the team she thinks he's playing for I think I'm too much of an old curmudgeon to fully enjoy love stories or take ones with young people seriously Hinode is stressed because he secretly wants to do pottery like his grandfather and take over the studio but he lacks the courage to say anything when his mother tells him that they can no longer afford it and will be getting rid of it cat Mio shows up to try and comfort Hinode while they sit and admire the moon Hinode is sad that he can't speak up for himself and tell his mother what he really wants and Mio's envisioning herself being held and talking to Hinode about how she struggles too and wanted to die and for a moment I'm like damn I should just turn this movie off because baby girl what have you been through maybe there's more to Mio's life and backstory but so far she has a dad who is present in her life and a stepmom who is trying her best to become close and be a part of her life maybe they'll reveal more but if I was talking to someone about how I feel pressure to take care of my family and provide for them after my dad died even though I want to go into a more creative field and someone looked me in my eyes and said yeah I get so sad too life is empty and pointless since my parents divorced I would shake them violently of course your parents divorcing can be impactful and traumatic in a lot of ways and damaging and people shouldn't trauma Olympics but are you serious look me in my eyes and say you're playing right now Mio the mad salesman shows up again and is trying to convince Mio why she should remain a cat Mio confesses her feelings in a letter and surprisingly Hinode rejects her and says he hates her I doubt he actually hates her because it's an anime but Mio gets sad and cries and I don't understand why because this entire movie so far he has said he wasn't interested but Hinode you like me when I'm a cat why can't you like me now maybe because you can't talk as a cat Mio have you considered that I think my issue throughout this movie so far is I can't relate and I think that's why Mio annoys me so much. Her stepmother goes, hey, why does it seem like you don't like me very much? Because it's very obvious you're feigning politeness. And then Mio throws a temper tantrum about how everyone is self-centered and selfish as though this entire movie isn't about how so far she has been a self-centered, selfish brat and her one-sided love that I'm assuming will eventually blossom into Hanode liking her is being carried by anime logic and her selfishness. She mentions that her mom walked out on her and then had the nerve to ask her to live with her and to be honest I get a lot of that frustration and the inner trauma she has to figure out but if you're smart enough to understand that your mom walked out then shouldn't you have sympathy or compassion for your dad shouldn't you want his happiness shouldn't he be allowed to move on and remarry and if you do recognize those things then why are you just as cold to your father
father as you are to your stepmother. I'm almost hoping that narratively there's something more here that Mio has more to her or there is more going on in her family dynamic than what has been portrayed because I don't really like her particularly. Mio runs away and says how nothing matters because everyone in her life can hate her. Her family, her one friend who has always been by her side, everyone can hate her but as long as she has Honode, it's okay. But baby girl, you don't have him. He wants you to leave him alone. Please leave him alone. Like for his mental health, leave him alone. Mio's level of obsession with Hinode at times makes me think there will be some twist that makes this a horror anime or a thriller that was meant to be cute in the first half and then takes a stalker slash serial killer style turn, but I see no evidence of that actually happening besides just her obsession with him. Makes me assume so. Hinode thinks about Mio in a letter she sent and then she appears in cat form after crying where she first met Hinode as a cat. As Hinode sits and thinks about how Mio and the cat both smell like the sun, which I'm not sure what that even really means, but whatever. As he sits and thinks about Mio, he eventually says, I love you, to his cat, which I assume means he eventually realizes his feelings for Mio. Because, again, anime logic. Everyone has to date the first person who showed them unrequited love. Cat mask salesman shows up and steals Mio's face because she only wants to be a cat now because her object of desire showed her affection that way. And the only reason I want Mio to turn back into a human before it's too late is because when her father and stepmother go to her school worried about her because she ran away, Mio's friend cries and calls herself useless. I like everyone in Mio's life more than Mio. I understand unrequited love, I understand how intense those feelings are when you're young, and I'm not just an old man going, back in my day, I get it, but I never would have hurt people who love me and care for me because of my feelings for someone else who has said time and time again they aren't interested. Hell, I wouldn't do that for a partner. Why would you hurt people, your friends and family and people who are good to you and love you for someone who asks you to leave them alone? What is this movie? Mio's friend talks about her being in grade school with her and Mio's past to Hinode and Hinode's friend and my eye begins to twitch because in the end Mio's friend is like hey Hinode do you really hate Mio? If so please ignore her like he didn't do that the entire movie. Yes you wanted to go look for her and took her to the nurse when she hurt herself and shared your lunch but that was after rejecting her and ignoring her over and over again so if you didn't want her why were you nice to her? This is such asinine logic I would straight up think Mio has mental health issues. Mio goes to her house while her parents are looking for her in order to say goodbye and then watches her mother and stepmother fight just before leaving and then a not so quiet part of me wishes Mio gets hit by a car. I would never want to see an animal hurt or abused but Mio isn't an animal she's a person who wants to be a cat and is currently a cat and I want people to get hit by cars in non-fatal ways all the time. So vroom vroom. While everyone who has ever interacted with Mio and cares about her looks for her all over the city she with her dumb human brain and a cat body is baffled that people are looking for a missing child especially her closest friend and family. Hinode after spending hours walking around looking for her sits in a park with cat Mio like I actually don't know anything about her. Where she likes to hang out. What she likes to do. I know I said earlier this isn't the pain Olympics and it isn't of course but Hinode is sitting there going despite having issues Mio always looked happy and tried to be happy and how strong she is for that. One pretending to be happy when you're sad is easy as hell. It's not really a feat of strength. Having hope that despite how I feel right now things will get better is real strength. Two Mio's life in comparison to Hinode day has a much better life. Mio's mother ran out on her when she was young. That is awful. But she has a caring stepmother who despite Mio being vaguely rude to and standoffish cares about her and wants nothing more than just to be in Mio's life. Her dad seems genuinely interested in her school and her interests and Hinode has an aging grandparent who can't really speak up for Hinode because I assume it's his fraternal grandfather, a dead father, and a mother who only cares if he's working hard so that he can someday take care of the family financially. He is as far as as the viewer is concerned, an eventual meal ticket to his mother. She has shown zero interest in him beyond his studies. And I wish this movie would stop going, look how similar they are. They have more in common than they thought when they don't at all. I understand Mio has issues with her family and she has internal struggles that she has to overcome, but she isn't looked at as someone who needs to constantly do well in hopes for the future. In fact, Mio is more or less allowed to have a personality and be a child. Mio has to put on a happy front at school, been standoffish at home, but her home life is filled with people who are going, hey, I know this is a lot, but we are family and we care about you and we won't stop caring about you. And this movie will portray that, then show Hinode's mother not even asking how his day went and go, see, they're so similar. Mio realizes there's consequences to actions when as Hinode is sitting in the rain lamenting about Mio being gone and talking to himself, she realizes she doesn't understand everything he's saying because the fat cat literally told her she will eventually become a full cat and cats don't speak human. So of course you don't understand everything he's says. It is so odd to me that she's willing to do any and everything for Hinode except leave him alone when he asks. A fake Mio returns home
home and it turns out that the fake Neo is actually the house cat you see in Mio's house that doesn't really like her. Realistically, an animal wanting to be a human makes no sense to me. If there's a god, in my next life he will make me a white woman's dog. This whole existential crisis having, I'm so lonely, isolated, no community having, work till I die human stuff is lame. Like who would want to be a human? Okay, no, the cat makes a great point and I support the cat staying as Mio. The former cat runs into cat Mio and it's like, I actually prefer being a cat but I'm near the end of my cat life and I want to continue making my human happy. So I want to be you Mio so I can be a good daughter for her. And I'm with that. Mio wanted to be a cat so she can hang out with a boy who for the first half in a movie wanted nothing to do with her and the cat wants to be human so that it can be a good person to someone that they care for. I'm so with this because Mio doesn't even want to be human because we have running water. She wants to be human so she can still know what Hinoda is saying. I know I'm bad with romance but I think Mio has to be one of the most unlikable characters with the worst character arcs I've ever seen. This movie goes to show that even if you pass the Bechdel test, it can be a shitty representation for women and young girls. Mio's entire existence is Hinoda to such a degree that it overshadows anything to do with her home life and family dynamic. Her obsession with Hinoda is enough that I almost want to just turn the movie off and read a plot summary. I kind of just want this movie to end already, so I'm going to turn the speed up. Mio the cat continues regretting that she chose to be a cat and finds the spirit cat world. Cat Mio, who is actually Mio's stepmother's cat, who turned into Mio to be with her, regrets becoming Mio because the stepmom is very sad that their cat is gone which makes sense i can get behind that logic cat mio goes to hinoda and it's like hey i'm not mio i'm a cat who is wearing mio's face you gotta help me i want to be a cat again they once again go on about how mio is a victim and can't imagine being loved by anyone even though she is surrounded by people who go out of their way for her and do right by her but sure hinoda who now realizes he loves mio despite admitting he knows nothing about her is what will help her see that she is loved cat mio takes hinoda to cat island where anthropomorphic cats live and she finds a bar full of people who used to be human and to be honest if i could be a cat person who walks on two legs and still gets to eat regular food that would be fire i'd take that deal cat mio with hinoda gives him a mask that allows him to see cat island but doesn't turn him into a cat fully but just gives him cat paws cat mask salesman locks up cat mio and hinoda and then shows up in front of mio the cat while she is listening to people in the bar go yeah i regret making myself a cat i turned myself into a cat because i was afraid i was a bad mom so i abandoned my kids i turned myself into a cat because i didn't know how to be in a relationship where i was loved and i didn't know how to love those are both very real reasons people said by the way anyway the cats in the bar jump mass salesman and help me or the cat but i'm genuinely more interested in how you can become an anthropomorphic cat is it like once you become a full cat it happens kind of thing or do you have to live there for a while on cat island cat mio gives mio the cat her face back but when mio the cat tries to become mio the human again it does doesn't work for some reason then the mass salesman shows up to steal Mio the cat because if he can get Mio to remain a cat forever he will get half her lifespan. It's explained that Mio didn't transform back into a human when she put the mask back on because she believes that being human will cause her pain and suffering which honestly I can't disagree with at all. No notes. But I guess her entire logic is my life sucks as a human so I want to be a cat but a cat that understands Hinode still which is such odd logic that it would be rude to children to call it childish. Mio the cat realizes oh no I brought Hinoda into all of this if he doesn't leave he will become a cat too and then for the second time during the movie Mio realizes every action has a reaction. Her obsession with being in Hinoda's life at any cost completely neglects not only his wants and wishes but anything he has going on in his personal life but whatever. Mass salesman takes them to a shrine where they can't escape and Mio and half cat Hinoda both remember when they first met in Mio's cat form and then they try to fight the mass salesman to turn her back into a human which doesn't make sense because it's explained she doesn't want to be human. That's why she couldn't turn back when they had the mask. But also while the mask salesman preys on people's insecurities and is pretty shitty and evil for that, this is all ultimately voluntary. Like he doesn't make you sign some contract with a hidden clause or something or make you say something. There isn't necessarily trickery involved. You have to internally not want to be human anymore. The last 15 minutes of this movie is so sappy but so unearned at the same time. Mio realizes as Hinode fights for her lifespan and talks about Mio Mio deserves to be human again because despite all her pain, blah blah blah, and then Mio goes, oh no, I need to be human again to return his feelings, this is all my fault. Which, one, yes, duh, it is your fault. Two, it's unearned because this isn't a movie about two people realizing their feelings for each other in the final hour, it's a movie about being obsessed with someone and then through the power of anime, those feelings are eventually reciprocated. Imagine you politely decline someone and then they proceed to bother you and essentially harass you every single day despite you saying, hey no leave me alone please. You would write
rightfully think that they are a weirdo to the point where you would go to administrators or even go to the authorities. That's what Mio did. She bothered and harassed Inode, and I refused to feel all warm and fuzzy inside about it. And finally, hell will freeze over before I look at Mio's life as troubled, at least to the degree they attempt to push it as. Mio has trauma and issues she needs to work out, and I hope she does someday. But Mio ultimately has a friend who loves her and is ride or die for her, a loving home to come back to with a kind and compassionate dad and stepmother, and I would even go so far as to say she would have a circle of friends if she didn't obsess over having Hanode love her romantically. The other cats show up and stop the mass cells, but then Mio and Hanode confess their love to one another. As Hanode and everyone leaves the shrine, Mio realizes, oh shit, people do love me and care for me, and I want to be better to those people. And sure, that's a nice message, but it's such an odd plot for a movie. Find romantic love, and then you can appreciate and be kind to the people around you who loved you the entire time. The movie ends with Hanode and Mio holding hands and saying I love you to one another, which is whatever. Credits roll. The credits of the movie is basically post what happened with the whole Cat Island stuff. And for me, it's really the only enjoyable part of the movie because it wraps up everything pretty nicely. Mio comes home, learns to forgive her mother. Hanode tells his mother he wants to go into pottery, which she seems to accept. Everything is wrapped up in a nice little bow. Final thoughts. I don't like the movie, but I don't hate it. I don't really like romance because it always leaves me sobbing in my room in the dark asking God when will it be my turn. The art and visuals are great and super pretty. I generally just have a problem with the plot. I wish they actually made Mio likable and not just oh I have issues but Hinode's love will fix me. It's such an odd premise. I really wish they had a normal romance anime and didn't have Mio's affections just be obsessively harassing Hinode and making it out to be that he just didn't realize his own feelings or that there was some choice in that at any point he could have just ignored her and this wouldn't have happened or that she would have stopped when they point out in the beginning of the movie that that's what he did. I think the story would have been more pleasant if they just had them as like classmates and she had a crush on him and then literally everything else played out the same. Like maybe Mio finds out he loves animals and that's why she does it. Generally my only issue with this movie was how they make Mio out to be this person with a troubled home life that's one to one with Hinode but also how she's obsessed over Hinode to the point where it felt more like at any moment she was going to become a yonder today and the anime was going to take a drastic turn. Also Loki just hate that it took love from a boy she likes to make her realize hey I should be better to the people around me who care for me. It's almost as if being stuck as a cat forever is just simply a quirky part of the story because her entire reason for wanting to be a person again is still Hinode. Everything is and was about Hinode. I don't know I wish it was better in that kind of sense if not for my own selfish reasons of wanting to like movies with female leads and see them do well. It's an okay movie. Don't watch it alone though like I did because now I'm sitting here going why can't someone love me half as much as that please God please thanks for watching <laughs>